Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on a Shimano 2000. This one was sent in by Mark, and Mark tells me, well, it needs a service, and he's had the reel for a long, long time, and uh, he would like me to get it going the way it should. And the first thing I notice here, very tight turning reel. It usually means dry grease, and then Mark mentioned it hasn't been serviced in a while. So we're going to take this reel apart, we're going to show you how it's made, we're going to show you how to service it, and hopefully get it back to Mark for years and years of additional service and enjoyment. So we start by removing the handle and the external pieces, and as I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like the art of reel repair, and if you want to see how reels are taken apart, how they're serviced, and how that service is completed, uh, this is a good channel for you. I'm trying to work that off. I notice it's a little sticky. There's a, uh, this can be removed. There's a little button here. There's a, that button pushes into this um, slot here. So sometimes that button gets uh, out of that slot. Makes it a little bit more difficult to do. Let's get the washer out of there. If you put that slot in the two sides and press down, you can remove the cup. So we'll, uh, I think what happened maybe here is that the washer got put in the wrong way. I don't know. Oh, find that out. He gave me a spare spool. I do believe that it goes the other way though. So that sits in here. All right. Well, we'll put that back together and we'll make sure that it, uh, it works fine. All right, that's not the issue with the reel. The issue really is the sluggishness of it. When I find a sluggish reel that hasn't been serviced in a while, it doesn't hurt to just flood everything uh, like that bale with some penetrating oil. Just work it in. That generally will help to move it up and out a little bit. This bale is way out of alignment here, which generally means that it's been bent. We'll show you how to reset that. And uh, we're going to get underneath and just take a look at what's going on with the case right now. So if you like the art of reel repair, I work on all kinds of reels. I invite you into my shop to, uh, to see how the reels are serviced, how they are made, how they come together, how they come apart, how you fix particular issues with reels. And if you enjoy that type of, of a uh, view into the fishing reels, then I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting. And, uh, well, you'll be able to see if that's a reel that interests you. Well, you can see a general theme here. There's a lot of old dirt and grease and, and the like in that collar. And then we want to pull the drag stack out by putting attention onto that clip there. That clip is a spring clip, it will start to move out. And then if you just slide another tool underneath, when you get that out, you can remove that. Note the side that it's on. That's your clip. And that's holding your whole drag stack in place. Looks like we have a little fracture here. I don't think that should matter too much. Uh, we'll deal with that uh, in a little bit. Let's see if we can get that out of the way. We align that. And this is your drag stack underneath. Okay, I'm going to take these pieces and parts. I'm going to put them into a parts tray. And we're going to open up the main case to find out exactly what the, uh, the core issues are here. My guess is that this just hasn't been serviced in a very long time. Mark tells me that. And uh, I'm thinking that's probably what's main cause of it being so sluggish. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you, uh, you own one and you're working on it and you're stuck, I, I will uh, try and answer those questions for you if you leave them in the comment section. And the comment section of this reel is, fi uh, is fine on this video. That you don't have to go searching for your reel. Maybe you're working on a pen reel right now, for example, and you've got an issue with a drag washer or something. Leave it in this one. They all come to me in the morning, and I uh, 
I'm happy to try and answer those questions for you and give you an assist so that you can keep your reels fishing or give one that maybe sitting on the shelf give it a second chance that's kind of the whole idea behind this and again this is an educational forum the whole idea is to teach you how to do it yourself and to, uh, well, to satisfy your curiosity if you're curious about the reels too all right the four screws should we enable me to remove the side plate very dry inside we're going to remove the axle shaft next. There is a screw here that holds the axle shaft on. So if you remove that little retainer clip, first you remove that screw. It's a good place to tell you to take pictures as you're working on the reel. Because if you get lost, pictures are your friend. They will tell you where the uh, orientation of the pieces and parts are, the order that you took them off, and well, how to keep them, uh, how to put them back together again if you've lost your way. We're going to take the crosswind block, hold that, and pull up. That will remove the axle shaft. Wipe your axle shaft clean. If there's any tarnish on there, use something a little bit more abrasive, like a kitchen scrubby or the like to uh, remove that. Now we can remove our main gear. And there's a bushing behind there that came out in this case as well. I would say that the, the main issue here, given that the upper level is turning fine, is that it was just a lot of dried grease and uh, a long time between services. All right, I want to take the rest of the bottom off here. There's, it's a good place for a picture. This is not a symmetrical crosswind block. It has two sides to it. There's a pointed side and a wing side. That's the upside when you go to reinstall. Behind that there's a crosswind gear. There's a little pliers to remove the gear. And all of those pieces and parts go into my parts tray. I keep them organized by sub-assemblies, but beyond that, it's, the organization is sort of chaos. With that stuff removed, we should be able to push down to remove the rest of the drag stack. And we want to check the, the drag washer set in there as well. I'm going to take the drag stack down into the case for now. Okay, one more thing to remove then in rebuilding all of this is the top set. The main uh, rotor nut is held on by a retention screw. And then this is a 12 millimeter nut that comes off in the traditional counterclockwise manner. And the rotor cannot come off. Underneath the rotor, we just see, well, what we've been seeing along, dried grease. And another place to take that picture of the sub-assemblies. So here is the single stop anti-reverse. It's always going to bring you back to the casting position on these. And we can remove that lever. And we have a bearing that is held in by two small collar screws. They have a little like built-in washer on top of those screws. These two I'm going to leave right on the desk because I'm going to put it right back after I remove the pinion gear and the bearing. There is some old grease on the case here, so I'm going to just use a penetrating oil to loosen that. And I'm going to use a cotton swab to mop that off. I also want to make sure that our anti-reverse dog, there's an override here, that our anti-reverse dog works nice and easily. It does. So all we want to do with that is a drop of oil to keep that working smoothly. Then I want to put it back into the off position. I'm going to take the bearing off of the pinion shaft. 
that's a shielded bearing, not a sealed bearing. So oil will seep in there if you just kind of let it go. I'm going to take a hard brush and pull through those teeth on the pinion gear. Make sure that they clean and that they're not damaged or have any kind of old pieces and that to can jam the operation. Once you've inspected that, reload the teeth. A little bit on top of that because that's the inner race of the bearing. Grab your bearing, place that on there, put the whole piece back into the assembly. Make sure that your bearing seat's flush to the rim of the case. And then take those two collar screws, one on each side, to hold that assembly in place. That's the upper end, with the exception of reinstalling the single stop and setting it for the proper position. There's a washer that goes on top of the bearing. That's the first piece back in. And then there's this assembly with the, the two spikes. And put your anti-reverse on and that's where you pull in. That should be your stop. And then you want to align, once it's set with the stop, align the trip lever to the side where you're going to be casting from. Now the other thing you need to do here, we've got this is there's way too much tension on this bale. So let's go address that before we put this back on. This is simply a matter of rebending the bale. This has probably got hit somewhere along the line in its years of service. And that's caused this to go out of whack. You can see that without tension, the little adjuster is all the way over here. It's about a quarter of an inch out. Just simply put tension back onto it and bend it back into shape. It's not that hard to do. And that's because, well, that's how it got knocked in the other direction. When you have that tension reset, this bale will trip a whole lot easier. Okay, we've reset that. And you can see now the post is inward. And this is going to flip a whole lot easier on the way back. Let's uh, put this on the case then. When you are using one of these easy casts, the easy cast always comes back and aligns with the handle. If you didn't know this little trick and you found out that your easy cast was way over here, don't panic. Just simply take it off and rotate it 180 degrees. And then you'll be set properly. Let's grab our nut and put that back on. And we'll do the base. Again, 12 millimeter. I use the wrench. You can use a deep socket ratchet. And before you go much further, spin it. And of course, that's spinning a whole lot better than it was, right? All right, I'm going to use the penetrating oil to clean up the old greases in here and on the cases. And then we should be able to reinstall. And there's a lot of old grease in this one. And Mark said he's had the reel for a long time. It hasn't been serviced. And, and he's right. He's right on both counts. And well, he, he knows this reel. So it's always helpful when somebody sends me a reel and knows the history of it. It does make it a lot easier to, to service. Okay, on the back of the main gear, there is a bushing. This is not a, this is a one ball bearing reel. And you need to remove that because there's two studs on this bushing at 180 degrees. And they go fit into the hole in the case. You can see the two case holes, one on each side. If you don't set that into the case, and make sure that it's nice and flush, 
When you go to reinstall your main gear, you're going to have a problem. It's not going to line up and there's going to be too much tension in the reel. So make a note of that as you're taking these off. You'll notice in that other case that's kind of soaking at the moment, that uh, bushing is the same type of bushing. And uh, it also has those same prongs on them and they need to be again in that case properly, otherwise you'll get too much surface tension on it. Okay, we're pretty much cleaned up with this. There's a a little bit more residual. I'm using a cotton swab to get in there and get that old grease mopped up. And interestingly enough, we're talking about that, but this one was not set in. I don't know if it just popped out. My guess is maybe not. Maybe that was what was causing everything to be so sluggish, but it's there now. Okay. Check your teeth on your oscillation gear. Make sure that's clean. You have that old grease behind there and get it out. So much of real service and repair is checking, cleaning, re -lubing. This oscillation gear gets grease on all sides. So, so far we've seen probably two issues with the reel that could be causing the sluggishness. The first issue we saw was that the, there was a lot of dried grease in the light in this reel. The second one we saw is that there's a possibility that this case bushing came loose and came out. Okay, I'm going to take a quick look at our, our drag washers. Okay, check the drag washers. These are a series of felt washers. These are totally greased. I don't know if they just got greased here or whatever. They're in good condition. This is your click ratchet that goes up top. You can see that's the click noise maker. So there are two slots in the case and there are two washers that are your uh, washers that will have the tabs on them and they need to, need to ride in that slot. I'll put those in. Next up then is your adjuster with your spring inside the cap. Push that in and then you need to load the that spring into the two side cavities. And with that clip in secured, we can turn our attention back to the main gear and complete the assembly. Okay, we want to make sure that we get the grease onto the main gear. And it hasn't seen some grease in quite some time. Let's make sure that it's there. Grease onto the back end, which is going to drive the oscillation gear. Grease onto the stud where it's going to ride in the bushing. Same on this side. We can put, our, just put that off to the side for a moment. Take our cross wind block. Get grease into the channel and on the face of it. Move that over the stud on the cross wind gear. Like that. Now we can insert the main gear. And we can bring our axle shaft with a light coat of grease through the pinion gear, flat side facing out, through the cross wind block, and then merge it into the drag stack. There's a slot above and below on that axle shaft, get the teeth of that clip on it, on both sides it's a double C clip, and align the hole for the tie down screw. Of course go to your case for that tie down screw. And let's tighten that up. So we've essentially taken the reel, almost every piece in the reel off. We left that little click maker, noise maker there. We left the um, anti-reverse arm on, that's okay. Next step then, we want to take our um, side plate cover. That should go on. I'm going to flip that anti-reverse to the other side, it'll make it easier. We'll do our bin and get the four screws.
Now one of the things that's good here is that Mark gave me two spools. One that didn't work because that little prong was out. We can make work again and I'm uncertain as to which where that uh, clip belongs so I can go to the good spool open that up and I can check on that. Pretty neat. So I think the, the main tension on this reel, the issue was that that case bushing seems to have come out of its uh, bridge there. Everything else on the reel looks pretty good. We did rebend and reshape the bell because of the uh, tension on it. So that should flip nice and easily. And I'm not a fan of easy cast reels. I've never really fished them. I prefer a manual bail that you can trip back and reset manually. I, I think it extends the life of it. I tend to fish with manually resetting the bail as opposed to letting it slam against the, the trip lever or the like. Okay, cap goes on next. These cap on. You can take the screw that's going to hold that cap on for an adjustment. So I'm to make sure I'm all the way down when I tighten that handle. Oh, look at that, it's turning. What a surprise. Now I gotta just remember it's probably the other side. I probably have that handle backwards. This is where pictures help too. Of course, if you're servicing your own wheel, you know what side of the wheel you've set this up on. That's why pictures, if you have to be servicing the wheels, pictures are important. My pictures are the videos I'm doing, so I will uh, check my video out. Before I return this reel to Mark, if I have it on the wrong side, I will certainly make sure that it goes on the right side. And then he gave me a replacement spool here. So let's open it up and see which what the orientation is on that washer. Okay, so the orientation is spring on top and bottom, metal washer in between. That's the way it came off the other one. I just didn't put it back that way initially. So let's go do that now. Now we have the button. Put that in the track. We have one of the washers. That goes next. Then our little collar here. That's going to go between the two prongs of that push button. And then we can just reseat this in here. And that should work now. So if you ever get a stuck spool like that that relies on that kind of a thing, that's what you want to do. All right. So a little bit more of cleanup. There's a little bit more dirt here. We've done an awful lot on this reel. We've taken a reel completely apart. We've kind of showed you the design on it. Let's go put this back on. Let's give it the test. Look at that. I didn't expect anything less. A nice, smooth, easy, free-flowing reel. You're in cast mode, quick fire, trip. Nice trip back on the bale. And uh, well, let's see if we did any good with this. Push it in, remove the spool. It's magic. All right, I hope you've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed working on it, and I've enjoyed helping Mark give this reel a second chance. It's been in his uh, possession for a long time now, and it's got plenty of fishing left in it. So again, if you like these types of uh, videos, please subscribe. If you do subscribe, please use the notification button. To our first responders and essential personnel, I want to thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. I appreciate your dedication and career in public safety. 
to those of you saying, hey, but he didn't put that screw back in. All right, my, another reason why you use a parts tray when you see that screw over there, you know your business is not done. Lastly, let's make sure that that drag is nice and tight, and it is. And this one's ready to be returned. So to everybody, please stay safe, stay well, enjoy your time on the water, enjoy your art of fishing reel repair, and have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.